Hello aviators, welcome to my instrument rating video series. I'm Ty Jones, your error nerd, bringing you honest experience, reviews, training tips that will help you aviate, navigate, and communicate. Now, if you're new here, the purpose of this video series is to bring you free, in-depth instrument ground school training for you instrument pilots. This is the same exact training and instructions that I normally give to my students. And if you're one of my students that are watching, yes, you can use this as a review because this is literally the same exact instructions that I give in the same exact way. Um, and it has been proven to work. So without further ado, let's jump right into the training. Hey instrument pilots, welcome to session number 12. We're going to be talking about the compass errors. Now you may recognize this acronym right here, DV Mona. There is many other acronyms, but this is the one I use. So this is the one we're going to use today. So D is for deviation. V variation. Now I'll just start right there before I go up to the next one. So D, so deviation. Deviation, as you know, the compass is really prone to magnetic field, right? Well, that's how the magnetic works. It has, here's our earth right here. Here's true north right here. And here's a magnetic north right here. And our compass aligns with these right here. That's why our low IFR charts are lined up with magnetic north. So it's literally lined up like that. That's why we don't have to do any kind of deviation uh, corrections there. Or I'm sorry, our variation lines. And our VFR charts are lined up with true north. Like this. That's why there's little variation lines that we have to go off of. Remember from your private training, east is least, west is best. Well, that is from our variation. That's literally what variation is for. But anyway, go back to deviation. Deviation, like I said before, the magnetic, the, the northern part of the magnetic compass is prone to, to magnets, to metal, right? And what do we have in our airplane? Well, lots of metal in our radios, right? So it actually interferes with that accuracy of our compass. Now you may see little deviation cards. So what will happen is, let's say you'll have your card right here. You'll have a north 360, uh, whatever. I'll just do, forgot exactly how it looks like, but anyway, it has. So north, we know is 360. So when they do their annual inspection or they do their 100 hour, what they'll do is they'll take a compass and they'll try to realign the compass setting to as, to as precisely as accurate as possible. And if they can't, if there's any deviation, if they have the aircraft facing north, actually I got, a, I got a north right here. If they have it facing north, but the compass reads 358, then you're gonna put it on here. When we face north, we have 358. So that's a, that's a uh, deviation of minus two from, so when you put it in your deviation, that's how you get those numbers. So that's what deviation is. A variation, I just explained what variation was and we're going to go to magnetic dip so here is magnetic dip so here's the earth right here actually it's, i'm going to go over here so the let's say here's our compass right here now our magnetic dip this is the north actually let's let's put the north right here so here's north so this is always attracted to the north always 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 but when we're near the equator it doesn't really have that much effect because it doesn't really it's, it's really far away however once we start going closer and closer and closer you see what's happening it really wants to be attracted to that uh to that north now what this is also going to do is is actually going to interfere with the with the turning and twisting so when you're actually turning you have a little bit of error there because of the magnetic dip the further north you are the more aggressive that mag magnetic dip air is going to be when you're in the equator it doesn't really have that much effect um, oscillation is literally uh, when you're because the compass is sitting in a in a bowl of kerosene pretty much now you're flying through the air you have turbulence you have vibration in the water the kerosene is moving around you have that that, iso that oscillation so that's what oscillation is uh -oh. i think that's how you spell it i'm a horrible speller by the way if that's wrong put it in the comments and make fun of me i don't care whatever 
Anyway, uh, N. N is for unos, undershoot north, overshoot south, and then ands, accelerate north, decelerate south. Okay, and the next one is gonna be unos. Now this is the one that I had a little bit trouble to understand. Uh, so I'm gonna try to explain this the best I can. So here is north and so this is gonna stand for undershoot north, overshoot south. So undershoot north. So this is under, shoot. And this is gonna be overshoot. This is south. So if you are flying north and you make a turn to the right, it's, the compass is actually going, it's so attracted to the north. So here's the north. It doesn't really wanna go that way. It's attracted to the north all the time. So when you turn this way, it's actually gonna turn slower than the actual airplane itself. Now, if you're going south, again, it really likes north. So if you're going south and, and you start, hold on, I'm gonna do this here. There we go. If you're, so here's your compass. If you're starting to turn, it's like, hey, I'm gonna actually start to turn a little bit faster. So it's going to over, uh, it's gonna go, it's actually gonna lead um, when you're turning from a southerly heading and it's actually going to lag when you're actually going to when you're flying when you're turning from a northerly heading so here's your compass right here going to the north and then when you turn it might actually t go into the opposite direction at first and then when you level out it's going to catch up to you so that's is why you literally have to under uh, undershoot uh, your heading so let's say you want to turn uh, 030 so 030 is gonna be right here now when you are when the airplane is actually physically facing 030 it might say it might indicate 010 so that's why when the compass says 010 you are undershooting you are at 030 that's what you want to fly to but you're going to undershoot and you're going to level out at heading 010 so when you do when you're when it's indicating 010 it's going to you're, it's still not finished turning it. it has to catch up to you because it moves at a slower rate than the aircraft is turning and then vice versa when you're south so that's why it says undershoot north overshoot south now there are some other um uh, tips on how much do you overshoot or how much do you uh, do you undershoot you may see you may see this uh, 30 20 10 0 so you overshoot this much of this many degrees based off the heading and then the same thing up here 10 20 30 and then so on and so forth I don't really like using this method because this changes depending on what latitude that you're at and how you can find that how you can find this out is by doing a simple little equation here it's your latitude and you get your latitude uh, divide it in half and then you add 15 degrees so that's literally how you get your how much you have to overshoot and undershoot um, and that is unos now we're going to talk about ands accelerate north decelerate south now why do when you accelerate the compass wants to go toward the north and when you decelerate it goes to the south now the compass always is attracted to the north now this has to do with a little bit of inertia so i got my silly little my, my little pen compass slash compass here now we have south on one end and we have north on the other so this is where the magnet is and it's always attracted to north so north and north so if i was on if i were to put this on a on a balancing spindle uh, in the middle, it would actually be heavier on one end because this is where the magnet is. So if I have some inertia, if I move forward, this is actually going to come back a little bit. And if I stop, it's actually going to move forward a little bit. So what happens is, it's going. I'm going on a westerly heading, and I'm flying, I'm flying, and let's say I accelerate. I accelerate really bad. Now you see what's happening here. The, the heavier side, the inertia of the side of the compass is actually coming toward me a little bit and when it does when I accelerate I see more of the northern part that's why you accelerate you see north vice versa if I'm going I'm going I'm going and I decelerate all this weight is going to 
be going to be thrown forward and look what side of the compass I see. I see a subtly hitting. So that's why it's accelerate north, decelerate south. So that's pretty much it for the compass ears. It is very important to understand the compass and how it works because even in the smallest airplanes to the biggest jumbo jet, they all have compasses in them. So it's very important to understand, which is why I kind of threw it in there. I apologize. I probably should have threw this in the earlier sessions, but better late than never, right? Uh, if you have any questions, if you feel I missed anything, as always, put them in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next session. Until then, keep flying, keep learning, and always have fun. I'll see you guys next time.